What's going on everyone? Are you ready to see what may be one of the most significant releases in RC for 2019? Let's take a look at the Element RC Enduro. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, um, Greg, who is Element RC? Well, it is a new brand to the RC industry, but it's by a company that has been here forever in the RC industry and has a ton of titles. And that company is Associated Electrics and Element RC is a brand under Associated Electrics. And I'm really excited that I get to show you guys this new vehicle. And uh, you know, we are going to go over it in great detail here. I'm actually going to have a time key down in the description below for those of you that want to jump ahead and see it in action. And you know, for those of you that want to see all the details, just keep on watching. There's a lot of stuff you don't want to miss. It's got associated written all over it, but just in a brand that is going to be really easy for anyone to use. And of course, I think do really well out in the scale community. So normally we go and unbox the vehicles here, you know, and I pull out everything out, but uh, you know, this truck right here, we're gonna have to dive right in so you can see some of the features. Now don't discount the unboxing. There is something about the box that you absolutely have to see. I promise it will be totally worth it, but it's gonna come later in the video. All right, so now let's talk about the truck and let's start off with the outside. I'm gonna break things down a little bit different than normal because this is a special release. I want it to be very cool for you guys to learn all about this new brand. And, and let's start off with talking about the exterior. Uh, you know, it's got this very cool Sendero body on it. That is the name of the body. And it is kind of a generic body here. There's no licensing on it, uh, but it does have some pretty good details. It's a, actually a two-piece body. Bed is a separate section than the front section here. And uh, you know, it's got this cool kind of gray paint job. Actually, if I was to buy a new SUV, it would actually be in this color. I love this color, um, you know, this kind of primary gray uh, type of color on it. But you know, it's got some pretty cool basic decals for the lights. Uh, but let's talk about the front grille on here because it does have some detail, you know, scale guys, they want some detail. And that is located up front with this separately molded grill. So right behind the grill is a, a decal. So you can kind of see your radiator behind it and these are two lenses for headlights and there are LED lights behind it. It's actually got a bucket behind the body to mount the light so it's nice and secure. So for those in the scale community, you know, that really want the LED lights, this comes with it from the factory, which is pretty cool. And uh, what's also very cool, I'm gonna get into it a little bit later, the plugs that they use for the LEDs are a more universal plug and not some wacky, weird, like airplane connector on there. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But let's move on to some other body details here. We've got some windshield wipers, molded windshield wipers on the front. Uh, you know, clear windows. It's a must nowadays. I know I had a couple of reviews where I let it slide, uh, but I'm leaning back towards having clear windows. And yes, we've got it here so you can go put your interior in a, of your choice. Uh, we do have some mirrors on the side. They are folding, so they got a little screw in here. So if you do go rub up against something, it will just collapse the mirror over and hopefully not break off. And again, on the back side here, that is a separate molded bed. We got some nice fender flares on here, some basic decal stuff again uh, for the taillights. We do have decals. It probably would have been nice element if you had some more LEDs in the back, uh, but you know, it is what it is. But the decals, they do look okay. And we have the element brand logo in the back there. You know, I'm guessing this is kind of like a Ford, maybe F100, please in the comments, let me know what you think it is. But I think that's where they got the inspiration from here, just based on some of the lines on this. Overall, a pretty cool looking body. And again, no interior in there, but you probably go fit one in yourself. All right, now let's move on to some other details on the exterior. We've got these pretty big shelf-like front and rear bumpers on here. Uh, we've got uh, hooks for D-rings. It doesn't have D-rings, but there are hooks for it. And it does have a plastic fair lead here with uh, two light buckets on either side. So I guess you could go put some LEDs in there later on. But this is actually a removable piece. And I actually saw in some of the paperwork that they have an aluminum version of this in different color anodizing. So there are already option parts for this brand new truck. In the back, just kind of a plain version of the bumper. It's got the little Element logo uh, right there in the center, but you can go and add some D-rings on later on. Uh, on the side, we've got these sliders kind of high up, so they're not gonna get caught on anything, but yet they'll still protect the side of the body and hopefully slide, over, slide and glide over some rocks and stuff like that. But overall, pretty cool looking pickup truck, and you can go and detail it more if you want to later on down the road. All right, 
Let's pop the top off and we can start to talk about some of the other details that are inside this thing. As I mentioned, it's from Associated, so it's got a lot of race inspiration in there. You know, they're always thinking about, you know, tuning their vehicles and stuff like that. And so you're going to see a lot of that in this kit here. Now, you know what? While I have the body off, I, I should probably just talk about the tires while I'm at it. These are general grabber tires and they've got a pretty nice soft compound feel to it. Pretty soft foam inside as well. It's, it's I don't think it's a memory foam. It comes back pretty quick. But this rim here is actually a beadlock wheel. So it's, you know, two pieces on the outside. It's got the center ring and actually the center hub is what secures it together. It doesn't have screws on the outside of the wheel. The, the wheel actually clamps together in the center at the hub. And what's very cool is I was reading through the instructions again and the, the paperwork that came with this. They're actually going to offer for a brass hub to put in the center. So you can go and put some weight down there without maybe adding stick on weights or anything like that. So it's already got, those options are already coming in here. That's very cool. It's got six screws in the center that secure that hub together. And I did take one apart. It does hold everything together really nicely. And then we've got these center caps that go over the uh, three millimeter locking. They are method wheels. So again, we got another licensed product here. We got method wheels, we got general tires, uh, element. It seems like they're doing it right, right out of the box. You know, we, we didn't get a licensed body, but we do have licensed products on there. So I think that is pretty cool. All right, now let's get into the truck itself. And I want to talk about the chassis parts. Usually I kind of work my way back, but let's talk about the chassis. And I'm going to break each section out to talk about it because there's so much detail. All right, now the chassis is a stamped steel frame uh, and it is a high clearance frame. So, you know, those of you that uh, are looking for aftermarket chassis, probably just want to stick with this one. This one probably has the clearance that you're going to need. Uh, it is adjustable. There are uh, additional holes in the rear of the vehicle. Up front, it does have a standard style uh, bumper mount. So you can go and use uh, aftermarket bumpers if you want to. Uh, same with the rear. It's kind of got a drop down style of uh, bumper mount to it. But again, if you do want to go and customize your vehicle, which is what scale is all about, you have the option to do so. Moving a little bit farther back here, there is a chassis mounted servo and it's kind of just a simple plate that goes in the center but it's also a very important plate because it also allows you to put a winch servo in there i think that was pretty cool when i was looking it over uh, but here's your steering servo here and here is your opening for the winch servo and again that fair lead is right up front so you can run your winch line right out the front of the truck all right, now a little bit farther back from that front steering mount is the battery mount. And here it is right up front where most of us want it. And if you noticed, this is a short stubby little battery box. That's because it takes shorty style LiPo batteries, kind of like in the 110 scale racing world. And it secures the battery down with, with two Velcro straps like, like many trucks do. Uh, but Element RC went ahead and they gave you a standard size battery box in the kit. So you can go and swap this out if you have standard batteries already and want to use it in this truck. You don't need to have shorties. You know, you could just swap that out. But the shorty option is a great option. It gets that weight up front. Uh, you know, it doesn't add too much weight. And from what I hear, you know, you could get a pretty long runtime out of a shorty pack. And Reedy is a brand of associated as well. They handle all the electronics and stuff like that, and they have a wide array of batteries uh, that will fit in here, even a shorty 3S LiPo pack. I'm going to be running it on a 2S LiPo pack from Reedy, a Reedy Wolf pack, uh, but that option is out there. And now let me just wrap up with the, uh, you know, it's got a just a simple rear brace uh, for the rear of the frame. We've got simple shock hoops here. There is adjustments on the shock hoops. I'm getting a little into suspension, but, uh, you know, just to let you know, there are two mounting positions for the shocks. Uh, and then adjustable body mounts. And it's kind of a standard style body mount and will probably line up with a number of bodies that were out there. Don't quote me on that one, uh, but it kind of has that look to it. Now to finish off the chassis, why don't I just talk about these uh, floor pans here, kind of a very short floor pan, uh, both uh, you know on each side. One side, of course, you know, is for the speed controller. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then we have the receiver box and that can actually be uh, placed on either side. There's holes for it and the, the sliders mount with just uh, two screws on each side. Uh, so pretty simple stuff, actually. Now, the only miss that I spot here is no fender wells. Now, like I kind of said, you know, if you're a regular viewer, you know this, that all scale trucks should have fender wells. Um, they're not here, but I'm sure, you know what, maybe Night Customs or something will probably come out with it really quickly. So I'm sure that option will be available. And, and who knows, maybe Element RC will have it. I kind of wish they were on here, though. It does look like there's uh, mounting points to do that. So who knows, we might see that as an option. 
All right, now with the chassis stuff out of the way, why don't we move on to the suspension? Because there's a lot to talk about here. And I'll start off with the front. Let's talk about the shocks. Now, do these shocks look familiar? I'm sure that they do if you have been in an RC for a while. These are basically team associated truck shocks. Tried and true and proven race worthy shocks. They are now on this Enduro truck. This is a very cool shock. They feel great anodizing to the aluminum body. We have an aluminum spring perch on there. It's threaded so it's easy to adjust you know, large shock shafts, and it looks like a really heavy duty composite cap. It's got a really wide top to it. So, you know, these are a really nice looking shock. Again, they've been proven forever and the spring rates are adjustable. I saw that on the list of option parts as well. Kind of looks like we've got a, maybe a silver or white spring on here. And there are a bunch of other variations that you could put on this uh, to tune your suspension on here. So that's very cool. Oil filled shocks. And I know they felt really smooth when I was messing around with it before. I mean, this thing must just do awesome out there on the trail. Uh, let's move on to the suspension links. They're a five millimeter thick metal plated rod. They look super awesome and on the ends, they've got the team associated gray links to them and they should be really, really durable, which is key. You're not gonna have that flex and, and, and maybe those links kind of springing off on you if you're, you're caught up on the rocks and stuff and, and causing some erratic handling, you know, when it, uh, when it lets go basically, you know, nice and solid and it should be predictable. The only thing is that I noticed is that they use plastic uh, ball studs in there. I think I would have liked to have seen metal. I know they have an option part for that as well. So that is available out there. Um, but we have the three link up front with the pan hard bar and then the four link in the rear. And just kind of looking at the geometry and, and, and feeling this truck, I, I think they got it right. You know, knowing Team Associated, they did their homework for excellent handling and this thing just feels right. I mean, it's looking at the way it articulates and everything. Uh, the mounting points on here, they are removable from the axle. Uh, there aren't any additional holes in the center, but I actually do want to talk about the skid while I'm here. It's a nice, small, flat plate, kind of have a little rounded uh, edge in the front course uh, angled on the side so there shouldn't be any hang-ups here in the center when you and it should just glide right over everything the way it feels really nice and smooth there all right I also need to talk to you about the steering link setup on this so the, from the servo arm we've got a solid metal link down to that metal plate on the steering knuckle and then instead of a link attaching the two knuckles in the front of the axle element RC went with a BTA setup behind the axle setup for the rear uh, drag link so we've got a metal drag link there and it is actually pressed bent so it goes around the axle so when you're steering it doesn't interfere with the axle but it gets that drag link out of the way so you have a better approach angle in the front when you're you know having to clear obstacles that may be in the center of the truck you won't have that bar hitting anymore all right now with the suspension out of the way now we can get to the drivetrain and there is a lot for me to talk about in the drivetrain so we've got you know solid axles front and rear obviously since it's a scale truck uh, but let me start off with the front because you know it's a bit different from the rear obviously we've got the caster blocks on each side they are a separate piece i know a lot of people like that so you could go and cant them uh, back if you want to and then that goes out to a plastic steering knuckle however it's not a, a full composite plastic steering knuckle element rc went over the top here and they have a metal steering arm on top much more durable than a plastic arm sticking out there um, but uh, inside the axle we have a metal spool and we have helical cut gears and what's nice about the helical cut gear is there's more surface area more durable uh, and that's what associated is going for they've got nice thick drive shafts front and rear on this uh, again for better durability and uh, you know associate they they kind of have been watching the market they've been looking to see what you guys want in a vehicle and they put it in here so yes it does have universals in the front seal ball bearings throughout the entire drive line so there is no skimping around in the drivetrain it is built to you know hold up to whatever you're going to throw at it now here's another interesting thought you know the pumpkin size is pretty small in comparison to some of the others that are out there but you may notice it's kind of wide and that's because element made it possible to flip the spool over so some most Motors, you know, they don't allow you to run it in reverse direction or your speed controller setup. So, uh, you know, it may, you know, run faster in reverse than it does in forward. And well, now you could go and flip the drivetrain around. So if you have that issue with your particular electronics, 
you know, you could go and correct it and, and have, you know, faster forward than you do in reverse. So that was pretty cool that they gave you that option to flip the spool over in the center. All right, now that I've talked about the basically everything of the front axle, oh, it's got a really nice truss set up in the front going over the top and the front cover is what comes off to access everything. And the rear axle setup is much similar to the front, uh, you know, but instead of having universals in the rear, we've just got solid shafts that go out to the back. Uh, they're five millimeters at the end. Again, really made to be durable uh, and then at the end of those axle shafts are 12 millimeter standard wheel hexes they are a composite but i did see that element rc will be offering a aluminum option or a, an alloy option instead so that's uh you know something to maybe check out later on down the road when you're looking to upgrade on this but again i really like the adjustability of this drivetrain now that i've talked about that let me move on to the center drive shafts here and we've got universal drive shafts that go up to the transmission uh they have metal universals on the ends the slider portion in the front and the back back is, is a plastic composite slider, but right in the center is an extruded aluminum tube and it's keyed uh, to go along with the, uh, the plastic drive shafts. You'll have a little bit of give and you want a little bit of give in your drive shafts if you don't want to break anything here in the plastic, uh, but where it really counts here in the center section is an extruded aluminum piece and that, that holds true for the front and rear. I like that setup, pretty trick there. And now we can get to the center transmission. This is the Stealth X transmission. I think it's so cool that Associated brought back that name in through Element RC. And this is a pretty neat transmission setup. You have a lot of adjustability here, including overdrive. And it is set up right out of the box with overdrive to the front. Now, TM Associated also offers a separate gear set. There's a gear set that comes with the truck that I'll show you in just a bit. But right now, the front end comes overdriven by about 6%. It's a little on a five point something. So what overdrive does is it actually spins the front wheels a little bit quicker than the rear wheels. So that will help pull you up and over opposite obstacles and rocks and stuff like that. You know, again, kind of kind of that race thinking right out of the box that's influenced by the team associated side, you know, looking for that performance advantage. They included that right out of the box. And what's really nice about you know, overdriving the front is that when you're descending an obstacle or something like that, the rear is, is spinning slower. So it's kind of dragging the rear down the hill. So there's a bit more control there. Now this transmission setup, it's actually pretty wide and that's because there's two uh, lower gears, two idler gears, and then one top shaft gear. And so that is how you uh, go and adjust your overdrive. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's there's another set in there. You could go and swap it out. So you could go and overdrive the front end by, uh, I think it was about 11%. So, you know, you get even more wheel speed out of the front to, to help you pull up and over. So again, tuning and adjustability, you could go and, and do a number of different adjustments actually. So the, with the way the transmission is set up, you know, you can see the motor is over here. You could actually take this transmission out spin it around, put it back in. It does require an optional top shaft, but the option is there. The tuning options are there. Now that top shaft does go out to a, uh, basically a solid mounted spur gear. We've got two, what looks like slipper plates, hexagon slipper plates that are keyed into the spur gear. And I assume that if you did want to go and put in a slipper clutch, you would be able to do so. Don't quote me on that, but it kind of has that look that you just stick an associated slipper pad in there. Uh, but it is an aluminum motor plate, which is something I do like over plastic motor plates that are out there on other vehicles. It offers a solid mount for the motor and you know it helps dissipate a little bit of heat. There is a gear cover on there, so you're not gonna get any uh, you know rocks or debris in those gears and really neat transmission setup overall. The top gear on the top shaft is metal. The idler gears are metal. The lower gears are plastic. However, you know, if you do want the offer a number of machine gears for this. So again, option parts are going to be available right out of the gate with this thing. All right, and now I guess we could talk about the electronics in here and let's start off with the steering servo up front. 180 ounces of torque in this one, guys. Usually we see like 125, 145. We've got 180 in this, so we've got more torque than I think any other stock scaler out there. And I could be wrong on that, but you know, 180 ounces is a lot out of this. Um, it is a metal gear servo, of course. There is a plastic servo arm on here, um, but I've seen those under the Reedy line. You can get aluminum. Uh, servo horn for this and so beyond the Reedy servo we do have a Reedy SC 400 X speed controller and this kind of looks like a speed controller we've seen out there on the market before but uh, I heard there were some revisions made to this so there is a bit more of an aggressive braking profile to it it is adjustable um, but you know, it comes fitted with a T-plug and as I mentioned earlier on it has these kind of standard servo plug style leads off of it to power the LEDs so you know when you go and get aftermarket LED lights like uh, Proline lights, 
these will plug right in uh, to those Proline lights without any problems, unlike uh, some other speed controllers out there that have these little white connectors on there and kind of, you know, proprietary to that speed controller, that brand. Uh, but this is much more universal. It does have bolt plugs going over to the motor, so you could go and swap out uh, motors nice and easily. Reedy already offers a different crawler motor for this, but speaking about the motor that comes in this, it's actually pretty pretty unique a bit better than i think some other stock crawler motors are this is a 16 turn five slot brush motor so it's going to give you that speed that you need that wheel speed but it's also going to give you that smooth torque that you're looking for as well so that's pretty cool that this option is in this truck then over here in the receiver box is the xp receiver uh it is a four channel receiver so that allows you to go and plug in your accessories if you want uh, again if you want to go and get a, a winch servo for this you can do this because i'm going to show you the radio in a minute but the receiver box is a water resistant receiver box it's got a, a rubber seal around it a rubber uh, ring around the uh, the wires coming out of the the box here i wouldn't say it's completely waterproof uh, you know water might be able to get in here through the wires uh, but uh, you know if you're into the scale type scene you could probably figure out a way to make sure water doesn't get in there but what's really nice it's a large receiver box so it's got to it's got to house all those different accessories maybe some light modules or if you have a winch module or something like that you could probably fit it all into this box all right i think that wraps up the features of the truck now why don't we go look in the box i'll show you all the accessories it comes with and that special feature all right, so here's the rest of the gear that comes with the Element RC Enduro. And uh, when I start showing you this stuff here, this is basically you know kind of some additional parts that you may need with it. Here is that battery tray that I talked to you guys about before. And then we have a rear extended body mount, you know, for those SUV bodies. And uh, then a bunch of little parts. Let me dump this out here. So here are the optional gears for the overdrive. Uh, so you can go and install those right out of the box and start tuning the transmission to the way you want the truck to drive. Um, and then there's some extra servo horns, you know, if you have an aftermarket servo going in there. A uh, couple additional composite ball studs uh, for the suspension. And then a random Phillips head screw. Don't know what that one's for, but uh, it's included. Maybe it's for the servo or something. All right, now the new radio system that comes with the truck. And this is the XP-130. There's an instruction manual in here to help you figure out all the details of the transmitter. But this is a three-channel transmitter. Pretty nice-looking transmitter. Um, you know, it's got this foam grip on the wheel. Love that. And uh, the chrome wheel has a faux disc brake behind it. Pretty neat. Uh, pretty comfortable radio system. Four AA's go in the bottom. Uh, we have all your usual trim features up here. This throttle trim, steering trim, dual rate for throttle and steering with servo reverses. And then channel three, you can go and adjust the EPA of channel three and the channel three switch is right here at the end. So you can go and flip this. It is a uh, three position switch, it feels like. And uh, you can go access that while you're driving. You can just kind of hold your finger over the wheel and just flip it as you need it. But that allows you to go and put a winch servo in there if you want to and can control it with the third channel. Very cool feature on there. I like this radio. Hope I get to use it a lot more. Uh, and then we also have the instruction manual and some other literature that you would expect uh, the vehicle to come with. Uh, so the, here, here's some of those option parts already. Uh, optional springs, optional wheels, hard end of die shocks. And then this looks like your quick start guide. We've got the speed controller instructions, the instruction manual for the truck, which is really well laid out. And it's all, you know, step-by-step -step building. So who knows, maybe it'll have a kit. I don't know for sure. Don't quote me on that. But the way the instruction manual is laid out wouldn't surprise me. And finally, we've got a uh, decal sheet. So you can go customize the look of your truck with uh, all sorts of stuff. Even down to four sale signs and a SBG logo. That's pretty cool right there. And now on to the box. And you're probably like, really? You're gonna show me the box, Greg? Yes, I have to show you the box because if you've been looking at it while I've been talking, kind of notice that this is like a, a brick pattern here. Well, actually the inside of the box is like a garage diorama. So you could go and basically set up your own garage by using the box. So give me one minute. I'm gonna unfold this thing. I'm gonna show you how cool this is. And there you have it, the shipping box turned inside out. It's now a garage diorama for your scale crawler. How cool is that? That's pretty awesome. I took a couple pictures of it already and it works really well with Instagram. And if you get the right angle, you could even do some rectangular Facebook posts as well. So it's gonna be awesome for social media and showing off your new Element RC Enduro. All right, I think it's about time that we head out, find some rocks and see how the Enduro performs.
I'm back from my first journey with the Element RC Enduro and I have a lot to talk to you about. But first, let me tell you where I took the truck. Now that was in Kent, Connecticut uh, on the Housatonic River by the Appalachian Trail. And it's just a beautiful spot to go crawling and you know just enjoy nature. And you know, of course, there's a lot of challenging stuff for the truck there to go over. Now this truck was just incredible from the moment I put it down. And the first thing that I recognized uh, over anything was it's very quiet. Now, a lot of trail trucks that I've driven They've got a lot of gear wine to them and even some grind here and there. But this thing was more associated race quality. The acceleration on this is super smooth. It has a lot of torque to just pull this truck up and over. Uh, the feeling of the truck is like a lightweight uh, truck. You know, it does have that smaller battery pack in there, uh, but there's not a lot going on in this truck. And I imagine, you know, if you go and scale it out, it'll get a, a bit heavier. But, you know, right off the bat, it's got a more performance feel to it. Uh, it really just articulates over everything that you go over. And there's not a lot of wheel lift. I mean, yes, it does happen here and there, depending on the height of the object you're going over. Uh, but uh, just a lot of the natural terrain that was there, the low terrain, uh, you know, the, the truck was just working. The axle was twisting and the truck was twisting. The chassis was staying level. Um, the tires were hitting the body here and there. I mean, it is kind of a larger sidewall tire. And the, and the truck has a little bit of droop to it, but the result is excellent handling. It's it's not like it's getting hung up when it's hitting the body or anything like that. You know, you just get the, the little clicking here and there. Um, but back to the power, you know, this, this motor that's in here for a stock motor out of the box, I really like the power of it. You know, top speed wise, it's it's kind of like everything else out there where it's uh, just faster than a, a walking pace. It's got the torque, it's got the smooth feel to it, which is what I really like. Uh, as far as the speed controller and the braking was concerned, uh, I left it with the stock setup. I tried the 100% setup really quick uh, of 100% brake. That was a bit too much to me. So I went back to the stock setup of the speed controller and, and I like the braking that that provided. It had some pretty smooth descents uh, depending on the angle, uh, but overall, I, I really liked how the motor and speed controller combination worked, uh, you know, out there where I was testing it. Uh, on to, let me talk about the steering next on this. The steering, and I don't think I mentioned this before, is true 45 degree steering on the, on the truck. And I could really tell that out there when I was navigating through the different rock formations and stuff. And I, I mean, I just recall multiple times where I'd go and crest uh, the top of a rock and was able to just cut the truck and turn right back around and come back down. Uh, you know, within a fairly tight radius. So I really like the steering on this. You know, I think that high torque servo in there is really doing its job. It's a great servo right out of the box and certainly just impressive for a ready to run. Uh, you know, no, no clicking from the steering or anything like that. Uh, it works really, really well just, you know, pulling this truck through uh, some of the rocks and stuff, and I was able to reset the position by by cranking the the steering a bit. You know, when going through different uh, types of terrain and stuff like that. So these they got the steering down on this. Now onto the suspension, and as I mentioned, you know this thing just kind of floated over a, a lot of that rough terrain. Everything from the steering to the power was just working well together, and I, I felt there was a lot more control with this truck. I was able to do some stuff with this truck that I, I really wouldn't have pushed other trucks to do, and I'm actually gonna overlay a certain video clip right now where I was just going up and above where I would normally push a truck. There was this, this V gap basically that I thought I could, you know, put this truck through and you'll see that it was it was up in the air and the control was actually pretty smooth it was pretty predictable I mean I didn't get completely through the obstacle but you could see the the position of this truck and how far you're able to push it I mean it, that was just really impressive to me I had to show you guys that and it just has this really great feel to it I mean you know, up and over pretty much anything that I had in my way yes I did roll it a number of times uh, you know, really pushing it above and beyond, climbing some steep rock, even wet rock, you know, it, it held its own pretty well. Uh, the traction on this was actually pretty good. Uh, I've talked to a couple of the other guys that, uh, you know, have early samples of these. And, uh, you know, if the tires get pretty dirty, there is some wheel slip there. But where I was, you know, it was a lot of wet ground. And so the tires were pretty clean most of the time. And so grip was pretty good with the stock tires. Uh, I heard that when they break in a bit more, then the traction is even better with them. But I was happy with how they were working where I was driving. And I could certainly see maybe adding a little bit of wheel weight in the front of this will help out even more it's not completely necessary again out of the box this thing just it handles amazingly uh but i could see those guys that just jump in and, and want to build this up to be 
you know, maybe a cool comp crawler or something like that are really going to be happy with how the truck performed. Onto durability, uh, there's really nothing to report. I did have a couple of rough rollovers uh, off of some of the, the higher rocks there. I did go through some water, nothing stopped. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly some scratches and stuff on the body, which is no big deal. Uh, it didn't seem to hang up on any of the rocks as far as, you know, in the center skid area. But there is one issue I, I do just want to point out to you guys. It's not, you know, it's not a durability issue, but it's the bumpers. The, the bumpers are pretty big and they hang kind of low in the front. And I did hang up an awful lot on these bumpers. And I kind of noticed that I could probably go and push the front bumper back a bit, drill some new holes, and that will help me set the, the bumper a little bit farther back for a better approach angle. But that's really the only issue I could find with the truck, and that's pretty easily remedied, maybe with some aftermarket bumpers or something like that. I'm sure Scalar Fab will, will probably have something. They're a good company to check out. Uh, but, you know, that was really it. That was really the only thing that I experienced during the entire time I was driving it. I think Associated, Element RC, I, they really just did their homework on this truck and, you know, came out with a true performer. And this is going to be a great truck for people to get into crawling with and for people to grow into and for builders to just go wild with it. Now, you know, let me talk to you guys about Element RC. I personally think that this is going to be a company that's going to be around. I don't think this is just a one and done type of thing. These guys are going into this at full throttle. I mean, we've got all the accessories, you know, lined up already. You know, they sent me over some shirts and hats and stuff like that. Banners, support gear for it from the Reedy line, from the team associated line, the factory team tools, pit mats and everything like that. I've got a stack of decals. So, you know, when a manufacturer does all that right out of the gate, that says something to me like, you know, we are serious about this. We we are AE. We are going to make this happen. And we are building trucks that people really want. And, and I certainly see that here with the Element Enduro. So this is something truly special here, guys. Definitely take a look at the Element RC Enduro if you are looking for your next big cool project, if you're looking to get into RC, because this truck has so many of the features that so many people want. Hope you guys really enjoyed this review. I put a lot of time and effort into it to make sure you guys got all the information. Now I wanna know what you think. Do you guys like this truck? Do you wanna see more from Element RC? Throw in the comment section below and make this video the spot where everybody can know everything about the Element RC Enduro.